folks, Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com, the ChrisVossShow.com. Here with the blog post we want to share with you, of course, we review the latest in social media and technology. This is from T-Mobile.com. That's T-Mobile.com. You're probably familiar with T-Mobile. And uh, this is our HTC One S is a Sam. HTC One S is in Sam. You've probably seen a number of different phones of variants from the HTC One lineup. They make a really great phone, and this is T-Mobile's version. Uh, just a side note, we'll be reviewing more phones by T-Mobile. Be sure to check those out on our YouTube channel and the ChrisVossShow.com. We'll also be doing some comparisons and showing off the benefits of their service and all that good stuff. So, let's take a look. We'll spin around the box here and get, let you take a look at it, the back and all that good stuff. And you got some details there and all that fun. But uh, we're going to go ahead and unbox this baby and see what's inside. So let's do it. Okay, so let's open this baby up. Let's go ahead and pop it off here. And uh, let's see. All right. And you can see the device here. Now, we've already gotten into the case. Normally, you'd have a protector on the screen and probably some other sales material. Uh, you can see here it's a very... Uh, beautiful good looking design. Uh, let's go ahead and pop it out so you can take a look at it. And uh, our first impressions have been with the phone. It's a wonderfully thin phone. It's very nice and light in the hand, but it's actually full featured and uh, fully powered so you can really rock and roll with this baby. It's a little thinner than the HTC One X, uh, which does make it a little bit nicer. You don't feel like you're holding as much bulk, so I do like that feature about it. Um, it's not much thinner, but it's definitely enough to make a difference to where you don't feel like you're going to drop it as much as you would to larger phones. So we'll get back into the phone here. Let's finish the unboxing and some of the goodies and stuff that are in here. Let's see. Looks like we've got a plug to where you can plug this into the wall, of course, and a USB, micro USB cable where you can take and plug that into either your computer and do that, or you can take and plug it into the plug that it comes with. Looks like we have a uh, terms and Conditions book, of course, looks like that's something you could take and read uh, when you really want to fall asleep. Looks like we have a T-Mobile handset recycling program, so this is really great. You can send this back in with your prior phone that you're going to get rid of once you switch to T-Mobile. And we got the uh, T-Mobile Start Guide, uh, which helps you get your HTC One up and running. Now, this comes with the Android 4.0. It's already been upgraded to the 4.03, and it has HTC Sense in it. So let's get into it. Okay, so when you pull this out of the box, it's got a beautiful, kind of steelish looking case to it, and it works really well against this beautiful black glass that it has here. You've got your power button on the top. You can see here that we've got a, uh, the area for your speaker when you're making calls. We also have the front facing camera. We'll get into some of the details of this. But you can watch the boot up. Let's talk about some of the details as this boots up. You'll probably see the T Mobile logo pop up here. But what you're looking at is the kind of a fun T-Mobile entrance opening there. Uh, what you're looking at is the body is a 130.9 by 65 by 7.88 millimeters, weighs uh, 119.5 grams. It's a super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen with 16 million colors. It's got a size of a 540 by 960, 4.3 inch screen with a 256 ppi pixel density. It's Corning Gorilla Glass and it runs on the HD Sense UI. Okay, and it runs off of, uh, it's got Beats audio on it, so you've got the ability to enhance your sound. You're looking at the memory card, there's no memory card to it or slot for it. It has internal 16 gigabytes of memory and then it's got one gigabyte of RAM. You're looking at uh, eight megapixels on the camera uh, 32 by uh, 64 by 2,448 pixels, autofocus LED flash, uh, simult simultaneously HD video and image recording. It's got 1080p, which will record at in HD format at 60 frames per second, according to T-Mobile's box on this. Uh, the front-facing camera, uh, we're not sure what the uh, camera load is on it. You can probably find that online. And uh, it will do VGA recording. So uh, it runs on Android 4.0 is what it will normally come with. We actually have one that's been upgraded to 4.03 Android. 
uh, ice cream sandwich, if you will. It runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip and a dual core 1.5 gigahertz. And uh, let's see, what else do we need to cover with you guys? It has a 1,650 milliamp standard battery, so uh, it'll give you a good lasting long time for rock and roll. Of course, we mentioned it has the Beats audio sound on it. So it's a great little phone, and like I said, we've had it open to play with it for a little while, and we really like it. If you like the HTC One products, this is uh, a really great product, mainly because it's a little bit smaller, but also uh, it just feels better in the hand, etc., etc. So let's take a look at the menu on the front. We have the back button where you can uh, press to go back. We have the home button where you can go to the home, and then we also have the recent apps button. Now, the one thing we've seen with the HTC One line is that uh, some of them have been updated to Android Ice Cream Sandwich 4.04. .04. And in doing so, they updated this button so that you could touch that to, or you could customize it to either pull up recent applications or you could make it a menu. Now, what they've done with the HTC Sense software is they've built in the menu into the software as opposed to the button bar below here. <clears throat> so with the new update, the 4.0 update, you can decide if you want to make that button a menu or you can set it so you can hold it. There's a number of adjustments that you can take and make with it. Uh, we don't know if that's going to be updated here on the HTC Sense, or I'm sorry, the HTC One S. But with it, uh, if it does come out, you'll be able to see that update. And that update's pretty cool. So you can see the buttons there. We've got, of course, like we said, the speaker and the front-facing camera. Let's take a look at the bottom. Okay, so we'll start with the bottom of the phone. You can see here there's not really much here other than a microphone area here to pick up your speaking and talking. On the top, we have your power button. We have a pull-off area where we can insert the SIM card. We'll show you that in a second. Another kind of microphone area, if you will, or hole. And then, of course, we have the earphone plug where you can take and plug that in. The great thing about the earphone plug on the HTC is as soon as you plug it in, you'll activate the Beats audio and you'll get the enhanced sound from that. Okay, so here we have the left side of the unit. You can see we have a plug-in for the charge on the unit. Now, the great thing about this, too, is uh, if you buy an adapter, you can actually plug this into an HDMI TV, which is pretty cool. Here we have the right side of the device. You can see we've got a long rocker button, which takes the volume up and down. I really like the beautiful uh, gray look of the case because it gives it a, a metallic feel and a metallic look. And... Uh, I don't know, it just kind of enhances the phone in a, in a kind of way that uh, really offsets with the black glass, like I said. Here you can see the back of the device, and you can see we've got the Beats Audio logo. You've got your speaker down here, uh, which is pretty good keeping it out of the uh, out of the back of your hand. If you're holding it up here, you'll be, you won't be shutting off the sound from your speaker. As you can see here, we've got across the top uh, your camera and great camera eye. Then we also have the flash. One thing I'm going to mention here is one of the complaints I've had with some of the other models of HTC's One series is that they were kind of bent and they weren't a lot of protection around the camera eye to keep it from getting scratched. The one thing I've really liked about the uh, HTC One S is that it's got a nice build up around it where it's it's not going to scratch your camera eye when you're laying it flat on the surface. So I like the build up that's built into this One S uh, over the One X. The One X tends to leave it a little bit more open. If you don't have a case, you're definitely going to scratch this camera eye, which is rough on a camera and a phone if, if you buy it to use it partially for that method. So I like the build on this where it is built up here and protective of the uh, camera eye. You can also pop the top off here and of course this is where you will insert your uh, SIM card so you can activate your phone and get it all going on. So that pops on and off. Like I said I do really like the color and the phone has a good rock solid feel to it. The one thing I found with the HTC One series is it's heavy enough to be a rock and roll phone it's light enough to uh, survive drops and it's got a plastic case to it so it will tend to uh, bounce a little bit depending upon where you drop it so it's going to survive a little bit more than if you have something made of glass okay so now the phone has the famous HTC ring pull where you basically pull this ring to take and pull it out of standby you can just swipe to pull it out of standby or the other cool thing that you can do to bring it out of standby is you can 
press your finger on one of these icons that you have and drag it into the ring and it will activate that particular app for you. You can see here in this case it brings up the phone menu by putting in the phone. So it saves you a couple steps in time in being able to you know, unlock the phone and then go into the, the feature or app that you want. So you've got a fully customized widgets uh, screens that you can flip through here as with any of the Android products. It's not an infinite scroll. It goes from one side to the other. Some people like the infinite scroll. Some people like it this way. Um, you know, with all the customizable widgets that you can do with the Android product, it really doesn't matter that much. It works out pretty good. Uh, Phone-wise, let's take a look at the calling menu you can see here. Uh, it's got a great uh, thing for dialing. I've never run into any problems. Now, as we mentioned before, this is running on 4.03 Android. And uh, in the future, this menu can be here if they do add 4.04 Android to the HTC One S with T-Mobile. But what uh, HTC has done is built a menu into all the different screens that you can get into that you normally would with your menu buttons on any Android phone. So you have access to, of course, all those menu items there. Um, let's take a look at the menu. Of course, you've got the uh, menu items here uh, that are pretty normal. Uh, you can course track all the different things you want to do and the great thing is you can easily get into your settings so that you can set and adjust your uh, all the different things you want to do especially on the fly so it gives you a very fast way to access all this stuff and get into it we'll take a look here we'll show you it's Android 4.03 and it's got the HT Sense 4.0 so it's got some of the latest and coolest gadgets on it. Not quite Jelly Bean, which Jelly Bean was just issued uh, just recently. So um, not quite there, but there's not many phones. Well, I don't think there's hardly any phones that are on the market for uh, the Jelly Bean. I think now it's right now it's just the tablets. So uh, let's take a look at some of the different things we've done in benchmarking the uh, T-Mobile. What we've done is done a speed test with the T-Mobile network. And, of course, let's see if we can find the speed test. There we go. And uh, you'll note that we do have the Wi-Fi working right now. The speed test is going to be in the log results. We're going to look at the log results we ran earlier with the Wi-Fi off. So uh, please don't write me and go, you're doing the speed test with the Wi-Fi on. Um, you can see here the results we got. The results were very, very good. We were very impressed. Had some really strong upload in some cases. Had some really strong download in some cases comparable to some of the other services that we know that are out there. So we were really surprised. This is our first phone that we've had from T-Mobile and uh, we were pleasantly surprised. We were like, wow, they have really great service. Uh, keep in mind, we haven't ever tested them and so that's why we're like pleasantly surprised. Uh, we didn't know how they would fare otherwise. So uh, you can see some of the data here on their uh, the downloads we did, I think, let's see, five different consistent downloads here to get an idea as to how they worked and how well they did. So they did really good. Uh, this, of course, runs on the 4G network uh, and 3G that you can do through T-Mobile. Okay, so you can see here the results of our speed test net. Now, this is through the Wi-Fi uh, where we're using the uh, HTC One S as a hotspot. You can see the speeds that we took and got out of it. Fairly impressive with the speeds. Uh, we were able to watch Netflix in high definition mode uh, and it played very well. I think we hit one or two buffering bumps, but other than that, it played fine, gave us great video, uh, and we had the, uh, like I said, the settings on Netflix uh, turned all the way up. So uh, the hotspot worked incredibly well. We got great results of it, and we we're very pleased. Okay, so let's show you how the Beats Audio works. Now, I can tell you the enhancement with the Beats Audio uh, makes quite a bit of difference and evidently makes even more difference if you have the Beats Audio brand headphones. So, uh, in essence, uh, as soon as you plug in your earphone, uh, it Beats Audio should be enabled as soon as you start playing your music. So we're going to hit play here. What you'll see is the Beats Audio comes on to let you know that it's uh, enhancing your sound with the Beats audio feature. Now, if for example, maybe you don't like it on this particular song you're listening to, or uh, possibly maybe you're just not liking the enhancement, you can go ahead and turn this off and that will go ahead and remove Beats audio. You'll still see it's available there for you, so if you want to go back to it, you can always do that. But that's basically how the Beats audio works. I really like it. Okay, so you can see here the results of the feedback we're getting from the HTC One S in a Skype 
setup that we've done, a Skype call, if you will, a Skype video call uh, coming from the HTC One S coming to another phone. Now this is of course across the localized Wi-Fi network, but we found in testing that Skype calls and video calls with the front camera on the HTC One S uh, work very, very good and they come in very, very clear. Um, the image isn't perfect, but nothing is in a video call. So uh, we just want to give you an idea of what we're playing with here. And <coughs> of course, if you go to the back camera, you get a much higher resolution. But the front camera isn't bad at all. It's really great. Uh, it actually comes through very nicely on a Skype call. Okay, so now we're running a Skype test, and we've gotten great results of this. We're running through T-Mobile's system on the HTC One S and Sam. Um, sorry, it's a habit. Um, so you can see here we have uh, almost as good clarity as we had with the uh, localized Wi-Fi. And uh, from our testing that we've done, we've gotten great results, um, and it works really well over the 4G network that uh, you can utilize with T-Mobile. So great results there, whether you're using the, uh, the product on uh, localized Wi-Fi or using over T-Mobile system. Looks like the front camera works freaking awesome. Okay, so after running the N2 to benchmark uh, 2.9.2, you can see our scores came out to 7,041, which is really good. Got a great scoring in the RAM, CPU, 2D graphics, all that good stuff. So uh, this gives you a chance if you follow along with our thing, you'll be able to see uh, the scores on the phone that you have match up and whether or not you want to take and get this one. Okay, so you can see here in our Java test with the uh, and e bench, you can see here the results of iterations per second for uh, native was 58.12 and Java 180. Okay, so here's the billion counter uh, number. We get uh, we counted to a billion through the CPU in 19.479 seconds. Okay, so taking a look at results in Geekbench 2, uh, we got an overall score of 1579. Uh, you can see some of our integer scores here, and I'll just slowly page down so that you can take a look at this. You can see here our OS and uh, the processor and all that good stuff. Um, you can kind of follow along if you have your uh, phone that you have at home and you want to run a Geekbench 2 score or any of these benchmarkings, you can compare them to how your phone operates compared to how the HTC One S from T-Mobile operates. <clears throat> so you can see the different performance scores that we've got here. Okay, so here you can see our GL Benchmark 2.1.5. Uh, it's the Egypt standard that we're using here. <clears throat> we were able to process 6222 frames at 57 frames per second. So this screen boogies. GPS-wise, you can see we're picking a good amount of uh, satellites in, we've got about 21 that we're picking up in view, about 12 in use, so it's picking up a good amount of satellite usage for its GPS. Okay, so here you can see the benchmark scores, and you can see how we total out 42.59, and the combined scores with CPU, memory, I.O., 2D and 3D scores. You can see where the uh, HTC one X is, and we're just barely below it. Now these are cumulative scores sent in by different people. Um, some of the usage is based upon uh, how many apps and different things, or what what sort of OSs are working on their computers. That's another contributing factor. But you can see here it overranks ASUS Transformer Primes, Motorola Atrix, Galaxy Tab, uh, ten point one, Galaxy Nexus, all these other phones. It definitely ranks at the top of the list, which is very good. Okay, so now let's take a look at the camera functions. We pretty much covered most of the phone. Uh, on the camera functions, you've got the ability, of course, to adjust your uh, uh, flash and your backlight or your light for when you're using camcorder. Uh, you, of course, have your settings gear here, uh, and you can go through and adjust all this uh, different elements that you have to control the front, the, the back, all that good stuff. Uh, you can also adjust your image resolution. This is pretty standard on most um, Android phones, so we'll skip through this. You can adjust your video quality, uh, duration, image adjustments, ISO, white balance, continuous shooting. This is one great thing about the HD phones. They have a continuous shooting series where you can shoot uh, up to 20 frames. Choose the best one you want, or you can hold the button to do continuous shooting, which works pretty well and jams out a whole mess of photos. Uh, you can capture a lot more action shots that way. You've got auto-upload, camera interface, <clears throat> 
you, we can do some adjustments here. Uh, video options, you can also uh, add video stabilization, record with audio, stereo recording, all that good stuff. So it gives you a lot of different options you can take and do. Face detection, widescreen, geotag, uh, all the great things that you can normally do with Android customization. Down here you've got several different shooting types of scenes you can choose from. Auto, slow motion video, HDR, panorama, portrait, group portrait, all this stuff, all the way down to low light, which is really useful if you're shooting in low light and you want to be able to adjust the camera. So you can really offset uh, a lot of different viewing problems you might be having to, and still take great pictures. Uh, <clears throat> touching this little opaque circle here, you get some effects and you can see these effects in real time uh, on the screen as you're taking the photo. So that makes it very easy to decide what you want to take and do with the effects. You can see here there's quite a few of them. Uh, vintage cold, sepia, some negatives, some post dry, some aqua where things can get really weird. So you have those options to be able to shoot those with the camera. Now you can see here you've got a shutter button for taking photos. You've got your camcorder button for taking video. You also have your zoom button where you can slide in and out here and be able to take your photos. <clears throat> now let's look at some photos. Okay, the one thing about the HTC is it does take really nice photos. So you can see here we've got really good colors, great reds. Now the one thing about the HTC phones as of late is they're definitely manipulating the yellow, bruise, and greens and they've been bumping it up. <clears throat> you can see here some video uh, that we're taking. Uh, on this video the floor is much darker and we've kind of noticed that what it does is uh, HTC has manipulated the yellow, bruise, and greens and jacked them up a little bit. It's not necessarily a bad thing. What it does is it gives you the impression that your photos are a lot more brighter than they really are. But uh, the, the challenge with that, especially in video, is if you get into a large green, yellow, or uh, blue environment, it tends to really dominate. But you can offset that. That's the beauty of the Android product. You can offset a lot of those controls. We don't have a big problem with it, but we definitely notice it with the HTC products. So I don't see it as a detriment. You just have to be aware of it and offset your ISO and your exposure settings and stuff uh, to get more of the true color. Here's a picture, of course, of our floor. And I can tell you it's a little bit much darker, well, not more a little bit, but it is much darker than this. Uh, so once again, it's pumping up the yellows. You can see the greens coming through very strongly in the photo. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It works very well. I mean, when you're out doing pictures and videos, it looks beautiful uh, and pops everything really nicely. It's just you have to be careful if you get environments with too much of one color. And of course, you can uh, customize that and adjust it. Here's some low light video. Took us a second to get in focus, but some low light video. And as you can see here, uh, the uh, the flash, the light works extremely well in being able to light up your environment and be able to see what's going on. The focus comes through, the colors come through. It does a great job uh, with being able to light up an area in the dark. <clears throat> Here's a uh, low light photo that we took. Comes out really great. The colors are still crisp. Lines, we can see everything perfectly in a dark situation so the flash does a great job in the camcorder light of lighting up an area and being able to see what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish so overall we really like the phone it's a great phone it feels like a brick in the way that it's built we like uh, the way the composite body is made up and uh, it's a great phone I mean we've loved all the HTC products so far um, and you can't miss with it really uh, I like how thin it is it's a lot uh, well I should say less wider it's a lot less wider than some of the other HTC one models but I kinda like that because it's not as big bulky fits better in your pocket it's easier to carry around and all that good stuff so I tend to like that just a little bit better um, you don't notice it when you're watching games and videos as much the difference in size is really minute so that makes uh, all the difference. But uh, judge for yourself. Watch your videos. We'll be doing comparisons of, of these videos and other T-Mobile phones and also all the other phones that we have in our collection and you'll be able to see those comparison videos. Be sure to check this out. This is at t-mobile.com. That's t-mobile.com. Thank you T-Mobile for providing the phones for us so we could get a chance to review them and share them with their audience. 
and uh, hopefully we'll get your answers, question, your questions answered for you. Uh, many people will put them in the comments below on YouTube, and we'll be glad to answer what questions we can on them. And be sure to check back on all the future stuff we'll be doing with T-Mobile and uh, other phones. Thanks for coming by the ChrisVossShow.com. Be sure to check back often. Chris Voss tested. Chris Voss approved. Thanks, T-Mobile.